Beardo Benjo. Hello there everyone, did you all have a very Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays if you don't celebrate? I really hope you all got some relaxation, ate far too much food, fell asleep in front of the telly and most importantly played lots and lots of video games. Now if what I'm seeing online is anything to be believed, it looks like we have a lot of new VR owners out there because the Quest 2 specifically was a very, very popular gift this Christmas and it's easy to see why it's an amazing piece of kit and a fantastic entryway into VR and playing in virtual reality. It's the next steps, however, that could be quite daunting. Once you've opened up the Quest, got it all set up and jumped in, one look at that Oculus Quest store can be overwhelming. There is an incredible amount of content on this thing and it's hard to narrow down exactly which games to start with and which games to spend your hard earned cash on. This video today is for you guys, you new Quest 2 owners. I'm gonna narrow down the best 25 Quest games that you should check out. I'm not saying buy them all, that would be very expensive, but these are the very best Quest games that I've played and I've played a huge amount of them over my time. I am keeping this list as diverse as possible. Lots of different genres, lots of different play styles and different things for different people to experience. But these really are the 25 best Quest games or Quest 2 games that are on the Oculus Store at the moment, according to me. But before we jump into today's video, I wanted to give something back to you new Quest 2 owners. So I have a giveaway running in the description down below. Go and check it out. There's a link there to a Gleam competition that I'm running where there are two copies of the fantastic In Death Unchained for Quest 2 up for grabs. Now I won't say too much about this game, but it's definitely going to appear on this list that I'm about to go through. It is a fantastic archery roguelite with a huge amount of replayability and is one of the most immersive and fun experiences I've had on my Quest 2 so far. To enter the competition, you just need to follow the link in the description and there are multiple ways to enter. Easy things like visit my YouTube channel. You've already done that, so just do it again. Don't forget to hit subscribe while you're there. That would be fantastic. Get those entries in. Two winners will be declared or announced on the 9th of January and you'll both get a copy of In Death Unchained for the Quest 2. Fantastic game. I will be doing more giveaways in the coming weeks as well, so stay tuned for that. But for now, let's dive in and have a look at the 25 best Quest 2 games for you new owners to check out now that you've got yourself one of these wonderful things that I love very, very much. First up on my list is Vacation Simulator. Now this is a great entry point for people who might not have a huge amount of experience with VR. Most of the gameplay, most of the mini games take place from a static position. They're not hugely energetic or active. So if you're not comfortable moving around in a VR play space just yet, it's a really good place to start. It's also amazingly colorful, extremely hilarious and fun for the entire family, kids right through to adults. Essentially, robots have created a simulation which is meant to be what a vacation is like, but they don't really know what a vacation's like. So again, just like in Job Simulator, they start to get it all wrong. It makes for some really wacky scenarios. The gameplay is simple, fun, and engaging. And as I say, it's a great entryway into VR if you haven't had a huge amount of experience playing inside that world. If you want something colorful, vibrant, and hilarious, check out Vacation Simulator or Job Simulator. I think Vacation Simulator, however, is a little bit better. If you're a fan of classics like House of the Dead or Time Crisis, then you should definitely check out Drop Dead Dual Strike. This game is a, as I just said, classic arcade shooter. Really stripped back, really simple, but it transfers so perfectly into VR. It's got a really cartoony aesthetic, so even if you don't like zombies or anything too horrifying, it isn't over the top, it isn't too in your face, and it's quite cartoony in its appearance, which means that most people could probably stomach this one, even though it's technically a horror game. It's got great shooting, really easy to jump in and play, and it does remind me of pumping coins into the old arcade machines and playing House of the Dead for hours. It's the closest thing to a new House of the Dead game I've played since, I guess, the Wii days, and it does actually remind me of some of those old Wii shooters, the light gun games. It's just good fun, it really is, and it isn't particularly expensive, well worth checking out if you want a simple arcade shooter. Up next is Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. This is one of the best VR games if you're looking for a party game. The thing about VR is when you're in the headset, it's quite secluded and it's hard to get other people involved unless they're watching you on a screen. In this game, the person in the headset has a bomb in front of them and they need to describe it to people outside of the headset who have the instructions for disarming the bomb. A fantastic party game 
hours and hours of enjoyment and it's just unique in that it brings a whole room of people together to play with a VR bit of equipment. Really smart, great execution. Check it out. At this point, Five Nights at Freddy's is a institution in gaming. It's beloved by so many across the world and it now exists in Quest 2 in VR. Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted is a horrifying adventure that will be enjoyed by fans of Five Nights at Freddy's and just fans of horror in general. The jump scares are real, the visuals are crisp, and although it's a new game, it's basically a walk down memory lane. You're playing out some of the most iconic and incredible moments from the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise in VR. Experiencing those locations and situations in full 3D with full scale is terrifying, immersive, and genuinely enjoyable. But having a giant animatronic wolf run at you down a corridor, it ain't nice. VR and escape rooms seem like something that should match up perfectly, and there are quite a few VR escape room games out there, but none of them really nail that puzzle solving mechanic. This game, The Room Dark Matter VR, absolutely nails the puzzle solving mechanic. Now this game isn't strictly an escape room, but it does absolutely nail that feeling of exploring your surroundings, interacting with everything, and using all of your brain power to overcome the puzzles and obstacles in your path. This one really is a bit more of a thinker, but it's such a great experience. You will get absolutely immersed in this world. If you enjoy solving puzzles, then this and Myst VR are two games that should be really high on your radar. I haven't played Myst yet, so sadly I couldn't put it on the list, but this one, The Room, challenged me and was a hugely enjoyable experience. Check it out if you love puzzle solving and an immersive deep story experience. From one puzzle game to another now, Red Matter is similar to The Room in that there are puzzles that you need to solve, but completely different in that instead of being set in Edwardian London, it's set on one of the moons of Saturn during a dystopian Cold War scenario. This game is fantastic. It borders on horror, but never quite goes full on on the terror. It's more of a building dread. The puzzles are great. The story is twisty, turny, and you won't know where it's going until the very, very end. And even then you'll probably still be a little bit confused about exactly what just happened. It's great for fans of a story-driven narrative uh, who want to solve puzzles and love a bit of sci-fi. I'm a big fan of sci-fi. This one really captured my imagination. Check out Red Matter, but make sure you bring your thinking cap because these puzzles are not easy. And now for something completely different. Some of my favorite VR games are the ones that give you completely creative and immersive ways to play video games. It's, it's okay to throw you in and just play a first person shooter in VR. It feels very cool to do so. But Ghost Giant does something that not a lot of VR games do and I wish more of them did. You genuinely play as a giant and you're interacting with what feels like a pop-up book world and Lewis who's a little creature in there that you befriend and it is it's just magical. It really feels like you're sitting there in front of a little diorama and you interact with the world to help Lewis make his way through the obstacles. You can pick up cars to move them out of the way, you can poke bushes to find creatures inside them. You can interact with that world and it feels real. It feels like it's all playing out in front of you. Ghost Giant is a very special narrative experience that isn't quite like anything else that exists in VR. I wish we got more of these kind of really immersive, different, VR games. I, I hope we see more in the years to come. Next up we have VR Chat. It took me absolutely ages to kind of understand this game and fall in love with it and appreciate it for what it is, but I'm there now. I completely get it. VR Chat is a social hub, a gaming hub, and just a place to interact with like-minded gamers, meet people, and, and play games. It's a all-in-one social experience, and some of the games in here are absolutely fantastic. There's almost a limitless amount of games you can jump in and play with friends, including a very, very good VR version of Among Us that everyone needs to try. That map is sublime. It's almost worth it for that alone. And also, the most important thing to mention, it's free. VR chat is free. There's no reason you shouldn't have it on your Oculus Quest. Get it downloaded, jump into some games, have some wacky experiences. It's very, very fun. Following on from VR Chat, another game that's very similar, 
Rec Room, another social experience game that is jam-packed with content. I actually struggle to wrap my head around just how much content is in here. Thousands of user-generated rooms and games of varying degrees of quality that are all completely free. Another game that is completely free. Get it downloaded, jump in, and just experiment. Run around, check out some rooms. I've found some fantastic paintball rooms, some quiz show rooms, some climbing rooms. There's just great stuff in here. Get some friends, jump into Rec Room, have a blast, great time. Have you ever wanted to be a spy? I'm sure we've all sat and watched James Bond at one point and thought, yeah, I could do that. I bet I'd make a fantastic spy. Well, I expect you to die will prove to you that actually, no, you, you probably wouldn't be. You'd probably die quite quickly. Um, <laughs> I Expect You To Die is a series of small mini games and enclosed VR experiences that pit you against scenarios whereby you need to figure out how to escape from that scenario or survive that scenario as a spy. Now, it sounds simple, but there are a lot of different ways that things can go wrong. Lasers can chop your head off if you press the wrong button. Cigarettes that you like might not be cigarettes. They might be bombs. It's a really, really relaxing... Uh, that's not the right word. Much like a vacation simulator or job simulator, it's another immersive but relaxing VR experience. You haven't got to move around too much and you're just interacting with the things that are kind of in close proximity to you. It's really fun trying to work out how to get out of these scenarios. There's so many things that can go wrong. And honestly, I expect you to die will teach you that being a spy is not as easy as James Bond makes it look. Next up, another absolute favorite of mine because it does something different with the VR technology and that is MOSS. MOSS is a third or second person, I guess, platform experience whereby you need to help Quill, who is a mouse, save her kingdom from almost certain destruction. Uh, in this game, you play as basically a giant floating omnipotent god, but you are there. Quill can see you, she can interact with you. And much like Ghost Giant, you feel like you're there. The world is laid out in front of you and you need to help her overcome obstacles and paths and traps. And it's great to play something that isn't just a first person shooter. You'll see in this list that there are a lot of first person shooter games for VR and they're very, very good. But platform games presented in a VR environment can be absolutely magical. And Moss is probably the best example of that. One of my favorite things about VR is the fact that it can make really mundane things seem really, really fun. And House Flipper is a great example of that. In House Flipper, you'll spend a lot of time cleaning the floor, getting rid of trash bags, and generally tidying up houses. But oh my God, does it feel fun. If you want to renovate houses, paint walls, knock walls down, generally just play around with the space that you're in, House Flipper is for you. The fantastic PC version is great, but putting it into VR is a stroke of genius. Make the house of your dreams, but you do have to clean it first and do all the really boring stuff. But don't worry, it is very, very fun in VR, if a little bit strange. Now, the biggest first person shooters in the world, like Call of Duty and Battlefield, haven't really embraced VR technology, but it's fine. We don't need them. We've got games like Onward. Onward is a fantastic tactical first person shooter for VR and it is available on the Quest. This is probably the best realistic shooter. There are some more shooters coming up in this list that I think maybe are a little bit better, but they're very different. But if you want a realistic, more rugged, tactical shooter, then Onward's probably the place to start. If you're looking for a serious first person shooter to play online, then this is probably the one to go for. If you don't want a Battle Royale experience or any kind of colorful textures, you want something grounded in reality that's a little bit more rugged and real, then yeah, check out Onward, it's absolutely fantastic. The game goes toe to toe with Pavlov in my experience. Pavlov is another fantastic shooter, but the Quest version of Pavlov is a little light on features and content, which is why in my opinion, Onward just edges it out and is the best realistic first person shooter for Quest. Up next, something a little bit more relaxing than shooting people, Top Golf VR, which also includes Pro Putt VR. Golf is just purpose built for VR. It just feels right. You know, some things work really well in VR. Shooting, bowling, there's not enough bowling games, and golf, 
Oh, they just work perfectly. Top Golf is a fantastic party game. If you get a few friends who all pick this up, you'll have a fantastic time. Being able to kick back with up to seven friends and play some golf in VR is a wonderful experience, and it's a more social one than you'd expect. Much like VR Chat and Rec Room, this is just a place to chill out, and it's a great representation of golf as well. The physics are perfect, especially in my favorite part, which is pro putt. I do enjoy the putting more than the driving and the actual golf, uh, but I'm a big fan of kind of mini golf and stuff like that, so I've always gravitated towards that. Regardless of how you play the game though, it's a relaxing and enjoyable experience and just a great multiplayer game if you want something that isn't shooting or platforming or killing, it's golf. Now, I'll be honest, this next game would probably make the list even if it was complete trash because the visuals are so gorgeous. But luckily for you, it's not trash. It's actually really, really good. Uh, Lies Beneath is a quest exclusive horror game that has just some of the most gorgeous visuals I've seen in VR so far. It feels like you're taking part in your own graphic novel or comic book. Fantastic cell shaded visuals make these disgusting creatures really pop out, but at the same time, not feel too grotesque and real because it's gone for a cartoony aesthetic it means more people can jump in and play don't get me wrong it is pretty horrifying it is pretty gory and it is very scary it's a horror game at the end of the day with a very very nice aesthetic you're still going to need pretty strong horror legs to enjoy it but i want everyone to give it a go because the visuals are fantastic the gameplay is slick and it's just so it's wonderful. Check out Lies Beneath. What a great horror game for Quest. I would have loved to include Tales from Galaxy's Edge on this list as the best Star Wars VR experience. It's a pretty good one, but it's not a finished product. Part 2 is still yet to come out and you have to pay for that to get the full experience. So I couldn't in all good conscience put it on this list, but it's okay. There is a better VR Star Wars game and that is Vader Immortal. Now Vader Immortal is it's the complete package. You get to wield the force, you get to use a lightsaber, you get to play a story which leads you right to Vader himself and engage in some pretty intense lightsaber duels with him, uh, which, is, which is great. But that's only part of the package. The core bit, the reason it's on this list is the Jedi Dojo, the lightsaber training dojo that's included with Vader Immortal. There is hours and hours of content and fun to be had in that part of the game alone. The lightsaber dojo is worth it for the asking price alone, in my humble opinion. Hours and hours of content there, hours of replayability, and you can unlock some of the most iconic sabers in the Star Wars franchise, including Darth Maul's, which was a selling point for me just on its own. Um, it really is the full package. If you're a Star Wars fan, Vader Immortal is the game to gravitate towards if you're looking for a Star Wars VR experience. Great story, hours of replayability in the lightsaber dojo, and you can use Darth Maul's lightsaber, which is two thumbs up from me. I'm not going to say much about this one uh, because everyone knows about this game by now. Beat Saber. Beat Saber is still one of the very best VR games that exists and you can get it on your Quest 2. You get to use lightsabers and you chop through blocks in time to the beat. It doesn't sound that fun when you explain it, but once you're in there, it just feels so, so right. You'll be addicted from the word go. If you haven't played Beat Saber, you need to grab it. And having it on the Quest 2 where it's completely wireless is the best way to play that game. Beat Saber, still the king of the rhythm VR games. Here's a little game that you've already heard about today, In Death Unchained. As I said at the start of this video, I am giving away two copies of this game. Check the description, enter the competition, be in with a chance to win a Quest 2 or Quest 1 copy of this game. This game is a fantastic archery roguelite adventure. Again, something you can play over and over and over again. Run the levels, try and get better scores, try and get better perks. It's, it's just immensely enjoyable. It makes you feel like Robin Hood. Well, I don't feel like Robin Hood because I'm a terrible shot, but if you are good at it, I'm sure you'll feel like Robin Hood or Legolas in no time. The game is also constantly being supported. They've just added a brand new mode, which is a wave-based defense, and even that is fantastic. Built for quick jump in, 15 minute to 30 minute play sessions, score the highest score you can, nail those headshots. It just feels joyous. Bow and arrows is another thing that works 
really, really well in VR. Every now and then you'll play a game and immediately fall in love with it to the point where you just cannot pull yourself away. You end up losing hours and hours in one day to one game. That happened to me recently with Pistol Whip. Pistol Whip is basically the crazy love child of John Wick, Beat Saber and pumping electro house music. Uh, it's absolutely joyous to play, it's rapturously good fun, and it's effectively an endless runner. You're running forward down a corridor, you don't control the movement, you're just constantly moving forward, and enemies are coming out from all around you. You need to shoot them and reload in time to the beat. There's no penalty if you don't shoot and reload in time to the beat, but I promise you, the songs are so catchy, you'll have no choice but to start blasting them and dodging in time to the music. This is one of those games that's really high energy, a great workout, but doesn't take a huge amount of space to play. It's also immediately accessible. Anyone can jump into VR and understand what you need to do in Pistol Whip very, very quickly. One of the best games to come out on VR in years and you can get it on Quest 2. Well worth your time. Again, another developer that keeps supporting their game with fantastic free updates. Check out Pistol Whip. Oh, we really are getting into the meaty stuff now. All these games I've just mentioned and the ones I'm about to mention are just the very best VR games I've played in my opinion. Uh, Until You Fall is up next. And this is another one that just makes you feel so powerful and makes you feel like you're part of the world. This again is very similar to something like Beat Saber or Pistol Whip, whereby it's all about the timing. It's all about the timing, it's all about paying attention to the prompts that are taking place in front of you, and it's all driven by a fantastic soundtrack once again. This is a sword fighting game whereby you need to chop, block, and dodge to stay alive, and it's a proper workout, this one. The first time I played this game, I played it in a hoodie and jeans, and that was a stupid idea. I worked up a ridiculous sweat. If you're looking for a colorful escapist, high energy VR experience, then Until You Fall is is probably the very best on the market. Between this and Pistol Whip, it's very close. They're both very, very good. Uh, check out Until You Fall, very, very sharp game. Right, creeping its way into the top five spot because it's free is Echo Arena VR. Now this game is, as I just said, it's free. No reason to not have this on your Oculus Quest 2. And it is a zero G online multiplayer shoot 'em up disc throwing bonanza. It's quite a hard one to describe, it's, it's better to play and experience it, but effectively it's a multiplayer, team-based, objective-based shooter in zero G. It feels a little bit like Extreme Frisbee meets Quidditch meets being in space with robots and guns. It's it's just wonderful. If you're looking for something that's a bit more extreme, this is probably a great place to start. It does involve a lot of going upside down and flipping all around, so you probably need quite strong VR legs for it. Maybe not the best one to start with, but once you get acclimatized to VR, you'll be gliding around in zero G, grabbing on the walls, bouncing off the walls, and shooting opponents in no time. Echo Arena VR is a free game that everyone should have downloaded onto their Quest 2. It's, it's just great. It really is fantastic. <sighs> the game that makes it onto every list I make, because it's just that good, is Saints and Sinners. It still doesn't really make sense to me that this thing runs on the Quest 2 or the Quest, yet there are some visual downgrades, but Saints and Sinners Quest version is the entire game and it's just as enjoyable, just as terrifying, just as tense, and just as strategic as the full PC VR version. I genuinely expected a hack and slash mindless zombie action game when this came out, but instead I was given a resource management, survival horror, tense, strategic action experience that was far beyond anything I think anyone was expecting it to be. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is the real deal, a full story-driven game with brand new wave-based modes that have been added to the Quest 2 since launch. It, it's just wonderful, but it is scary, it is tense, and it is extremely strategic. Go into this one expecting something a little bit slower, a little bit more tense, a little bit more strategic, and you'll have a fantastic time. It isn't a hack and slash, chop up all the zombies affair. You really need to manage the equipment you've got and the way you move around this world. It's joyous and I can't believe they've got it to run on Quest 2. It's check it out well worth your time right we're into the top three now that's absolutely crazy in at number three is mario kart vr effectively 
Dash Dash World. This game has won me over. It is my new favorite VR game to play when I'm sitting in a chair, relaxing. I don't want to stand up. I don't want to jump around. I just want to kick back and play some VR. Dash Dash World has so much content. It's overwhelming. Unlockable cars, unlockable parts for your character, a full campaign mode, online multiplayer, time trials. There's so much to dig into here and it really does feel like Mario Kart VR. You adopt a first person viewpoint so you're sitting there in your cart that you can fully customize from the wheels to the cockpit to the chassis itself and you're racing against opponents with weapons on some of the craziest tracks I've seen in a racing game in a very long time. Trust me when I say when you go round a big loop the loop your stomach will flip but it is an enjoyable experience. This game is jam-packed to the brim with content and everyone needs to try it out. I'm not a huge fan of racing games but this has completely won me over. It's joyous, it's colourful, it's fun for the whole family. Dash Dash World, check it out, really really good. In at number two is the granddaddy of VR games, Super Hot, Super Hot. I absolutely love this game. It still feels fresh today. I can still revisit it now, years later, and play it and get as much enjoyment out of it as I did all those years ago when I first played it. I've completed the campaign. I've done everything there is to, to do in that game, but I always return to it because the mechanics are so, so good. When you move, time moves. So you have to move slowly to dodge around bullets. You can grab guns out of opponent's hands and then shoot them with that gun. You can then throw that gun at another guy, which will kill that guy, meaning you can grab his gun. The way you can approach these situations and levels is phenomenal. It's easy to understand why Super Hot is still one of the best VR games out there. It just feels so freeing and so untethered. And that works perfectly in a wireless VR headset like the Quest 2. Check out Super Hot if for some reason you haven't already. Uh, everyone's played it right now, right? If you haven't, check it out. Super Hot is just absolutely fantastic. One of the very best VR games ever. Not just the best VR games for Quest, but just one of the best VR games there is. And finally, in at number one for this year, because by next year, things will have changed and my opinion will have changed and I'll do another list. But for right now, the best game on the Quest 2, in my humble opinion, is Population 1. In terms of value for money, there is nothing better out there. You will get hundreds of hours out of this VR first person battle royale game if you click with it. If you click with the mechanics and give it a chance to show you what it can do, you'll be absorbed and you'll be coming back for more time and time and time again. The map is huge. You can climb anything. You can literally climb anything. Climb to the top of something and then fly off it whilst you're flying you can get a gun out and shoot somebody it's so freeform that it creates so many opportunities for ridiculously hilarious emergent gameplay i haven't had this much fun in vr ever i don't think population one came out and i had fairly low expectations as i tend to for most things i don't want to get things too hyped up and it just blew all my expectations out the window and became one of the best vr experiences i've had all year with a few friends it's it's great. If you're a fan of Battle Royales, even if you're not a fan of Battle Royales, check out Population 1. The developers are supporting it with updates, skins, seasonal events. It is just, it's joyous. They know they're onto something here. They know they're onto a winner. Uh, everyone should own Population 1. The Quest 2 version is very, very good. Looks graphically stunning, very comparable to the PC VR version. I could gush about it all day. Check out Population 1. It's fantastic and it is the most value for money proposition on the Quest 2 store currently. It is just, you will get hundreds of hours. Fantastic game. And there we have it. I've made it to the end. I'm very tired now. That was a lot of fantastic games. Now, let me just say, uh, these games aren't necessarily definitively the very best. It's just the best in my opinion. I've played a lot of VR. I have PC VR and Quest. I've played a huge amount of VR games and these ones stand out to me as just being a little bit ahead of their peers. There's a lot of fantastic games on the Quest store and I know it can be quite daunting trying to spend your hard-earned money on just one of them. So these 25, in my opinion, will give you an experience that is well worth the money, the asking price that they're asking for, and will give you hours and hours of entertainment. I really hope you're enjoying the Quest 2, all you newcomers. Welcome to the world of VR. It's an exciting place to be and it's only going to get better. Don't forget to jump into the description and join the competition. Get your entries in. I will be picking a winner on the 9th of January, I believe it is. 
win yourself a copy of the fantastic In Death Unchained. I'll see you all soon for another video. I will be doing more giveaways, so don't forget to hit subscribe. Take care of yourselves. I will see you later. Thank you.